there. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're bringing you to Meng Dingshan in Sichuan Province. Green, black, oolong, different types of tea means different process. But even in the same tea category, different teas are made differently. For example, in green tea, we shared with you how Taiping Houkui is made in previous videos. And now let's go behind the scene and see how Meng Ding Gan Lu is made. Hi there, so we're in the uh, hill, we're on Manding Shan and in a tea field I just learned a little bit about plucking from Jian Li Wu. I've got an ill-fitting hat but it helps shade, keep me out of the sun. And there's some ladies picking tea in the background, chit-chatting. Uh, we were really lucky, we had a beautiful day today so it's perfect for plucking and for making tea. Tasted some uh, Meng Ding, uh, Meng Ding Guan, Gan Lu, Gan Lu, Meng Ding Gan Lu. And yeah, we saw a couple different cultivars here in the field, even a purple tea bush, just a little random thing. Beautiful, uh, beautiful hill and having a great time. We even walked up the mountain, so we got lots of exercise. Ding! This is a bug bitten one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Good. Take another one. How is it? Really fresh, actually. Not too astringent. Yeah? It's a little bit astringent. <laughs> but edible. What about the uh, compared to the other one you had? More astringent. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Nice. Ma Maybe the other one withered a little bit. I don't know. Because I'm loud. <laughs> 茶树，所以阳光是直射，直射，所以它的这个茶叶可能就会更加那个有树荫的那个要色。嗯，this mm. cutie little dog keeps the owner of company while she's plucking tea, but he doesn't recognize a foreigner face, so he was barking at a fell non-stop. This tiny leaf is called yu ye. It's the leftover leaf from last year. Usually, yu ye should not be plucked, but sometimes it got mixed in in the early batches. If you see this tiny yellowish leaf in your spring tea, it's a sign that this tea is plucked in very early spring. Wow, we just finished um, drinking tea on the mountain and also plucking, plucking tea. Some tea. And uh, there's going to be an experiment with the result of the plucked tea later. Mm -hmm. um, we saw a guard dog who didn't recognize Lao Wai, went crazy when he saw me because yeah. I was too close to the plucker. <laughs> really fun. Really learn a lot. We and saw three we're... cultivars right. and it really helps learn. You re learn really fast. You see, oh, that's not the same tea. Right. When you have that in the field, you were mentioning that. A really mm. good point. Like learning is fast out here because it's so tactile and, you know, you, you get it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So and now we we're going to going to uh, watch how they're making tea here right now. So I already see some smoke. I guess they got the fire going already. So uh, let's have a look. Let's go. On the way to the processing room, we bump into an old lady who just finished her plucking day. Mm. Meng Ding Gan Lu is a very well-known green tea from Sichuan province. It is one of the top 10 famous Chinese tea and has a signature snail shape. The unique process of Meng Ding Gan Lu features three times pen firing and three times shaping. Mr. Huang has been making handmade tea for the past 30 years. This is the first step of ganlu processing, pan firing. This batch only makes 125 grams of tea by the time it's fully done. The second step is shaping. To achieve the snail shape, the producer rolls the leaves into a bowl. This rolling step takes a while till it's ready for the second round of pan firing. It seems to be a pretty easy job, but when we do it ourselves, it's actually very technical. Phil and I could barely form a ball with the leaves, not to mention get all the leaves evenly rolled. Okay, let's watch the pro do it again. Okay, he uses a side hand. You see? 
Oh my god. <clears throat> it looks so easy when they're rolling. Yes. But when I roll it, it just never it curls. It just fell apart. Yes. Mine just fell apart. He keeps that all in a big bunch. Yes. And he condensed that a lot. He squeezed the hell out oh, of it. Oh, yeah. Then it's pen firing again. There are three rounds of pen firing and shaping in Ganlu process. Getting the bare hands in the walk itself is very skillful already. Furthermore, there are various techniques of how to do it in different phases of pen firing. Tea buds are high in amino acid, giving it a unique, refreshing, crisp taste, while mature leaves has more tea polyphenols. The stands has more tea polysaccharide, which studies has shown great effect on moderating blood sugar. Though people love buds when it comes to green tea because of the taste, if blood sugar is a concern to you, the lesser loved lower part of the plant might be better for you. This grade of green tea is usually astringent. You can try lower the water temperature and extend brewing time to help with it. After three rounds of a pan firing and shaping is the final drying. While toasting the tea, it's crucial to flip the leaves at a proper frequency that not only dries the tea evenly, but reduces the loss of the leaves. The buds are fragile and the trichomes are precious. The last step of tea making is always the tea appraisal as a quality check. This is where our expertise plays in. In China Magazine, we shared details about how we work with Mr. Wan to elevate his handmade tea to the next level. I'll put the link below if you are interested. Meng Dingshan is also known for a famous tea called Meng Ding Huang Ya. It's a yellow tea that only uses buds. This is the first step of making it. Are you interested to know how this tea is made? Subscribe to our channel, and you will be notified when there's a new video. Give this video a thumb up if you liked it, and feel free to share your thoughts or questions in the comment section below. Until next time, keep it sipping!